today we are going to talk about your slow stitch project and as part of that we're also going to look at and learn some different embroidery techniques and we're also going to learn about some different um, slow stitch tangent sewing techniques okay so kind of a lot of things um, before we get into slow stitch and your project and kind of the history of slow stitch and, and different as I said sort of sewing techniques that are related to it you need to know some stitches. Some of you may already know some embroidery stitches and you can totally use those. You don't have to just do the ones that I'm going to show you today. There are many, many, many kinds of embroidery, many embroidery stitches in the world. You are welcome to experiment, okay? So let's look at a few of them. These are the ones that we're gonna go over today. As I said, these are not the end all be all list of stitches. There are lots. Um, these are ones that I'm, very comfortable with and that my students have liked to use in the past. So running stitch, back stitch, split stitch, stem stitch, satin stitch, French knots, chain stitch, lazy daisy, feather stitch, and seed stitch. So it's kind of a good variety to get you started. Okay, so the most simple stitch that we have uh, when we think of embroidery and kind of the, the classic simple outlining stitch is the running stitch. So this is also what I kind of think of as just a regular hand sewn stitch. So you're going to weave the needle through the fabric and pull it through or punch each stitch through one at a time, a short distance away from the previous stitch, and then you just pull the thread through. Okay, so you can see here in the upper right image, you can see how my needle is going over, under, over, under. Then I'm gonna pull it through and what results is the pattern you see below. Pretty simple. This is this is arguably, other than maybe seed stitch, the most simple stitch we're going to look at today. Okay, back stitch. This is the one that I use probably the most when I do uh, sewing type projects. So basically, what you do is you make a stitch. So you're gonna pierce through your fabric, come back down, make a stitch like you see in the uh, in the beginning of the top image there. Then you're going to pull the needle back through with a little space, a little ahead of the stitch that you just made. And as you pull it through, you're going to pull the thread all the way up through, and then you're going to stab the needle back through the previous stitch that you made. So if you look at this top image, you can see that we've made, we've brought the needle up through the fabric from the back after the first stitch, then we're pulling it back up. Then we're stabbing the needle, and this is in the middle of this action, stabbing the needle through the end of the previous stitch, and then you'll pull it flat. And as you pull it flat, you'll have something that looks like what is in the lower image here, a line of stitches neatly one after the other. So you can kind of see how that looks, and you can see the action of what it is you're doing. Back stitch is a good stitch because um, unlike our running stitch, there aren't any gaps, so it makes like a nice solid line rather than kind of a, a dashed line, okay? Split stitch. This one uh, is also nice because it makes a solid line like back stitch, but it's a little bit fancier looking. It's a it's a little um, a little bit decorative. It's a little pretty. So you start it the same way that you start the back stitch. You make a nice small little neat straight stitch, but then you stab the needle back up instead of up in front of it like we do on the back stitch. You stab it right through the middle of your stitch. So you can see in this top image. Uh, the needle's coming up through the stitch you just made. Then you're going to put it back down in front of that stitch so that they're kind of interweaving like this, right? And you can kind of see what that looks like in the in the images. Stem stitch. So while our split stitch lines up like this and almost looks like braided hair kind of, our stem stitch, you're going to go not through the stitch, but next to it right below it and then it's going to give this look of like a twisting vine okay so you make your small straight stitch and then you poke the needle back through but you don't stab through the stitch you stab right underneath it right and then you make your next stitch and you do the same thing and so it kind of gives this winding look okay and again you can you have these slides on blackboard so you can go back and look closely at these at your leisure if I'm going too fast Satin stitch is really useful if you're trying to cover a wide area and you want it all to be the same color and be kind of one flat um, thread color. So first, and you don't have to draw the shape, but it is kind of helpful. You can draw whatever shape you're making in pencil 
And then you start at the end of the shape and you just end to end, just fill it with stitches that you pull really close to each other. So it's just filled with this sort of uh, shiny satin looking block of stitching. Okay. French knot. This is the one people have the most trouble with. And what I'm going to say is I recommend you go onto YouTube. There are a million tutorials on this and just find a tutorial of someone doing a French knot. I have these pictures of the steps, but if you watch someone doing it a couple times and then just take a piece of scrap fabric and make like a dozen of them, you're going to screw up the first couple. They're annoying, but you make these nice little neat kind of swirly knots, but you kind of just have to practice them over and over and over again. It's one of the least intuitive of the stitches. But basically what you do is you take the needle um, and you're going to bring it up through the fabric from the back. So you come up through the fabric, then you wrap the floss around the needle twice, like you can see in this upper image. And then you're gonna hold the thread tight and pass the needle back through the fabric next to where the needle came out Okay, and then you're going to keep the thread tight, hold it taut as you pull the needle back through, and then it gathers those swirls around the needle together to create a French knot. It's hard to explain and it's hard to capture in still photos, so as I said, this is one you just kind of have to practice. Chain stitch. This is another one that's a little more decorative, it's kind of pretty looking. So you are going to pull the needle and thread up through the back of the fabric. So you start at the back, you pull the needle through like in this lower uh, lower corner picture, and then you stab the needle back through the fabric next to where it came out, okay? And you pull it down, but you don't pull it all the way through. You don't pull it tight so that it lays flat. You leave a loop sticking up, okay? Then you bring your needle back up through that loop and kind of catch it, and then you stitch that back down. Okay, so that makes sense. You can see what I'm talking about in this um, image right here. So you're kind of, you're catching your loop with the next thread. Um, Lazy Daisy, this is also called a detached chain. It uses the same technique as the chain stitch. So as you can see, you're doing the same thing. You make like a loop and then you're trapping it. You're tapping it, tacking it down with a little stitch at the end. But instead of making it a continuous chain, you're kind of making them out in like the petals of a flower, okay? Feather stitch, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, my grandmother made a lot of crazy quilts and feather stitch is something that you see, well, I have one right here next to me that my grandmother made. Uh, you see feather stitch in these a lot. I don't know if you can see, but you can kind of see on there the feather stitching. So if you have any crazy quilts in your family, feather stitch is what was most commonly used on those. This is another variation of the chain stitch, but instead of having the loop where uh, the ends of the loop are really close together, like a, like a link in a chain, you spread them far apart like a V, okay? So basically, you bring the needle and floss up through the fabric to create a straight stitch, but you don't pull it all the way through, same as before. You allow the loop to form and bring the needle through that loop and then you space the next stitch over in the opposite direction from the previous stitch so you get this kind of uh, off center back and forth. Um, so it's called a feather stitch. It kind of looks like a feather or it maybe kind of looks like a vine a little bit. And then seed stitches are really easy. They're just small stitches that you make at different angles. So those are some of the basic kinds of stitches, okay? You can combine these. You don't have to just use one. In fact, you're going to use at least three on your project but you can combine them to create illustrations. Here are some examples of some floral illustrations using chain stitch, uh, feather stitch, satin stitch, and um, maybe some French knots in that one, I don't remember. There are many more stitches, but these are some of the most common. Other common stitches include the blanket stitch, which is very popular, um, and the fishbone. You can find tutorials of those online. Um, so those, those exist. You can just Google embroidery stitches and you'll find a million YouTube videos showing you how to do different stitches. Okay, so let's talk about some stitching techniques and considerations related to slow stitch. Okay, canvas stitch, plain sewing or stitch a square, borrow, cloth narratives, embellishment, dense stitching, destructive mending, 
applique and then color are the topics we're going to talk about next. Cantha. Cantha is a form of embroidery that um, comes to us from mostly India and Bangladesh, and its roots are mostly in rural areas, rural sort of um, isolated areas. Uh, the traditional form of Cantha was done with soft dhotis and saris, so these are uh, traditional Bangladeshi and Indian clothing, uh, with simple running stitch along the edges. Depending on the use of the finished product, they were known as lepkantha or sujni kantha. So these are um, particular kinds of fabric that's been decorated and embellished with embroidery stitching that's then used in clothing. Okay. Um, it's a rhythmic stitch with an end result that leaves the fabric looking kind of dimpled, like um, ripples of water. Generally, cantha is used to layer several thin pieces of fabric together. So here's an example on the side, and if you've ever seen old um, sari fabric, you see these kind of patterns. It's generally very simple stitch work, but they're done in these rhythmic kind of um, lines that cause the fabric to kind of pucker and ripple. And as I say here, um, it's often used with several layers of fabric, so thin layers of old worn silk that are then being stitched together. Cantha. Plain sewing or stitch a square. So this is a technique um, and it's another one that's kind of a rhythmic sort of stitching and it is one that it's debated where this first came from. It, it's maybe English, it's maybe um, French, but basically it's another kind of sewing that has its roots in rural areas that were more poor because the idea is it's a simple, inexpensive way to embellish fabrics and to um, take fabric remnants and stitch them together in an intentional way so that it's kind of mending with intention and with decorative intention. So um, this for this technique, you mark out a square on your fabric and then you fill it using again a simple running stitch. Um, and you do it any way that you use any way that you, you choose to do um, in any direction, but the idea is that the square that you mark out will be totally full of stitches by the time you're done. And the idea is to establish a rhythm to your stitches. All the things that we do that are related to slow stitch, the idea is that you're making something by hand and it's a slow kind of repeated rhythmic kind of effort, okay? Oro. Uh, boro is a Japanese technique, so this is a um, textile design style that's based on heavy patching. So again, a lot of these come with a tradition of mending fabric, right? So the term is a uh, derivative of the Japanese word boroboro, which means tattered or repaired. And the idea basically is that you're just putting patch upon patch upon patch upon patch upon patch upon patch and stitching them all down. Not necessarily with a particular pattern in mind, it's more just that the accumulated patchwork becomes a new textile in and of itself. Uh, narrative. So embroidery does not have to be abstract. Um, I have, I'm an abstract artist when I'm in my studio practice outside of uh, teaching. But I know that not everybody is, and um, some people in the past have struggled with things in fiber art because they, they, they don't like working in abstract ways, which is okay. I will say if you don't generally do abstract work, maybe this is a good time to experiment in that realm and push yourself. But embroidery does not have to just be abstract. You can use stitches to illustrate and draw with. You can have narrative stories. If you've had art history, um, you probably studied the Bayou Tapestry, which is a very, very long tapestry that um, shows the history of the uh, William the Conqueror and the Battle of Hastings. Um, so you can do representative work. It, it doesn't have to, your slow stitch project does not have to be something that is abstract. Embellishment. You can use embroidery to embellish the patterns in your dyed fabric. So some of the um, most successful and interesting slow stitch projects I've had in the past are when students are using their eco print or rust transfer and they go in and embroider around the um, shapes and patterns that are created in that fabric and enhance it with 
embroidery. So you don't have to just do arbitrary stitching. You can kind of take your cues more from the fabric that you've created than um, just doing line work that doesn't relate to the fabric. You can do it either way, but it's just a, a, an idea to put out there. Dense stitching. So this is something that um, has become very popular. I've noticed like on Instagram and in Pinterest and the DIY um, embroidery arts. You see a lot of people who are doing this kind of embroidery work where they're um, layering different types of stitches to create a very dense pat pattern or, or, or design or just abstract kind of fabric where you make such dense um, mostly satin stitches on top of each other that it becomes a new kind of fabric in and of itself. And that's certainly something that you can experiment with as well. Destructive mending. Um, if you utilize an older loose weave fabric, because you can supplement your um, eco print and rust print fabrics with other fabrics, you can uh, pull it apart. So you can pull threads partially out, like you're trying to unravel it, and then you thread your needle with that thread that you're pulling out and stitch it back up into itself, which is what's happening here, which makes a really interesting kind of subtle patterning. Applique. Um, applique is a French technique. So it's a sewing technique that involves, basically you take a piece of fabric that's different from the fabric you're working on, you cut it out into a shape, a lot of times it's floral shapes. It isn't always floral shapes. Um, Chanel's couture work pretty much always has a lot of applique. That's one of the things they're kind of known for. So you cut something out and then you stitch that back on to whatever other fabric that you're using. I've also seen students do this where they cut out the sort of floral or leaf shapes from their eco print and then applique them onto um, the fabric that they've dyed underneath it. So that is another, that's another technique that you can use. Color. Um, remember to think about your color choices, right? Uh, because of the textural element of fibers work, there are really interesting possibilities that are quite different from painting. As a painter, I always kind of think about things in relation to painting. I can't help it. That's the way my brain is wired. Um, your color theory knowledge is still helpful and still applies, but also you can do things like this example, which is black thread on a black surface, which in a painting would be, you know, very Malevich, very, very, very subtle. But in fiber art and embroidery, it looks kind of rad, right? And it's not quite as subtle. So we can use this textural contrast to do things that wouldn't work as well in other media. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. Okay, let's get into what's, what I mean by slow stitch and what slow stitch is as a project. Slow stitch is a fiber arts technique um, and it's about, it's kind of a state of mind. It's kind of about mindfulness and keeping time through needlework. The idea behind it is to counter some of the fast pace of the 21st century um, with a return to working slowly and intentionally with one's hands. So slow stitch is a pretty new idea and it's kind of, I think, I, I teach um, art history as well and I, I think about history um, in the art world, much like history in the rest of the world, that it's sort of cyclical, but it's also sort of like a pendulum. Things tend to swing back and forth. There's, there's always a response. Something happens and there's a response. So because everything has gotten so reliant on technology and so fast paced and we're so inundated with our phones beeping and video and all these very like oversaturated kind of media all the time, I think the reason we've seen such an uptick in DIY arts and crafts movements in the last 10-15 years is because it's sort of a counter reaction to all the automated, all the technological things. And so slow stitch has come out of this. It's an idea to make something with your hands and to make something that's more about mindfulness to what you're doing with your hands than even the end product, okay? It's also very tied in with ideas about upcycling and about mending and about making old things new, um, which of course stems from ideas about environmental impact, um, re-energizing traditional techniques. All of these things play into this idea that slow stitch that has become this kind of um, idea and movement in fiber arts in the last 10 years-ish. 
Okay, so here's some um, examples of student work from my past students. Um, I tried to select like kind of a variety of different projects that they've done. So you can see that um, the one on the left is purely abstract. Um, her rust print is highlighted, her eco print is the kind of purpley part, the yellow part she dyed with uh, turmeric, the backing, um, I can't remember what she dyed that one with it, maybe paprika? Uh, then we have on the top right a student who went in and really embellished her eco print. She really went in and did some stitching to emphasize where the floral patterning came through on the eco print. And then she did that kind of boro mending laying things on top of each other and a little bit of applique as well. You can see the applique leaf in the corner up there. Um, so she was combining several different techniques. The lower right, you can see someone who did a little more representational kind of narrative. Um, I don't think you can see it on here. Toward the bottom, she stitched uh, words from a poem that she likes that related to the images. It was a poem or a song, I can't remember which. But so she kind of incorporated um, a little bit of a narrative element and actually, like I said, wrote like stitched words from a, a, a poem on there. So you can do that as well. Um, you can also do things like uh, the student added some acorns, so she used acorns in one of her dye baths, and then she wanted to add acorns as an embellishment. You can totally do that. This is a further kind of zoomed out image of the uh, piece from the last slide, so you can see more of the applique leaves around the outside. This one was one where she really leaned into the idea of boro, of putting patches on patches and patches. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the slow stitch project requirements. Um, your project must be at least 18 inches in one dimension. So 18 inches wide, 18 inches long, whatever. It doesn't have to be 18 by 18 square. You must incorporate your eco print, your rust transfer, and hand dyed fabric that you have created. You can also create thrifted, found, or upcycled fabric. I don't want you to go buy fabric. I don't want you to go buy new fabric that you haven't created the design on in some way. But if you have like a favorite t-shirt or old sheets or something around that you want to tear up and incorporate, go for it. But if you go buy a specific fabric that's machine made, it's kind of counter to the whole idea of slow stitch. So don't do that. Um, you must utilize at least three different stitches. Those stitches do not have to be the stitches that I covered in this presentation, but you need to be able to point out to me three different stitches that you used. Okay. Um, you don't have to just use embroidery floss, okay? If you want to use some regular thread, you can. I will say that regular thread does not show up as well, so you want to double or triple that up if you're going to just use regular thread. Um, I, your, your work has to be displayed hanging from a stick or a rod of some kind. One semester I had a student whose dog always picked all her sticks for her, which I thought was adorable, so if you have a helpful dog that would find a stick for you, that's great. Um, and you may incorporate any of the techniques, applique, in stitch, borrow, whatever that we've discussed. You may also add embellishments if you want to. Okay, so that is slow stitch.